Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude our two-part message from Galatians chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 titled Bewitched. And as we get to the message, we want to read a letter we love from a brother Mark in Pennsylvania who writes, Hi Pastor Greg, thank you for your videos, especially the ones on dividing the word rightly. I was watching a video, I don't remember which one it was, but you had a picture of heaven and hell. Where will you spend eternity? I would love to know if it is possible to purchase so I can hang it up so to get my kids to think about eternity. Thank you. Jesus Christ is my Savior. Mark. Well, we responded to Brother Mark, and we're not sure about the picture that he was referring to, but we thank God for parents like Mark who want to raise their children knowing the truth of heaven and of hell and to teach them of the wonderful truth of how each of them can know that they have eternal life by faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We, meet, we need many, many more gospel preaching parents who will start right there in their own home preaching that wonderful gospel message. And we're thankful for these letters we get from listeners and viewers. And if you'd like to write to us, you can send your letter to P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. That's P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. You can also send us an email. The email address is 3Bs, B-B-B-F, Ohio at yahoo.com. That's BBBF Ohio at yahoo.com. Or you can go to bbfohio.com and send us a message there. That's bbfohio.com. We also want to remind you of our 24 hour, seven day a week, bbfohioradio.com, where you can tune in via the internet. 24 hours a day, seven days a week to Bible teaching and singing. And uh, that's, again, also like all of our other ministries, free of charge at bbfohioradio.com. That leads to a logical absurdity that Paul confronts with such people in verse 2. Now read that, verse 2 with me. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. <laughs> It should be so easy. How did you get saved in the first place? Did you do something? No, I believe the gospel. Then if you're saved by not doing something but believing the gospel, how is it you think that you now need to do something in order to eventually be saved or to stay saved? You were saved in the first place by believing the gospel. Repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance, what's that mean? It means you understand what you are. All your works, even the good ones, you understand are as filthy rags. You cannot save yourself. You are lost. That's the first thing you have to understand before you can be saved. The reason why a lot of people will never be saved is because they won't humble themselves and admit, I am a sinner. I do need help. I cannot save myself. I actually can't do anything to help save myself. And until you reach that point, you can't be saved. But then when you reach that point, repentance, changing your mind and turning your face toward the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. And completely trusting in Him alone. What He did on the cross and His empty tomb, that alone saves me. So we got a lot of people, sadly. And this is the thing is, I've never been called to look at people and say, you're saved, you're, you're not. You're saved, you're not. That's not my job, but it's not even something I have the skills for. Amen? <laughs> All I can do is tell you the truth, and only you and God know the answer to this question. Only you and God know whether you've ever come to Him and said, you know, I cannot save myself. And I need to be saved. Only you know that. People can come in here and come here for years and hang out with us and sing the hymns and open your Bible and go through. 
that doesn't mean you're saved. Amen. And that's what's happened in Galatian, at the Galatian church. I believe there's a bunch of people there who aren't saved. But Paul isn't going to point them out because Paul's not the Holy Spirit. So what's he going to do? He's going to warn them all. Just like this morning, we're all being warned. And it's up to you. You are responsible for your soul. I've met some people I don't think I've ever even thought. I mean, it's just like... There's no depth of thinking up there. But someday, you've got to sit still and think. One of these days, you've got to really do some heart and soul searching. You've got to ask yourself a tough question. Am I a fake? Am I going through the motions? Am I playing a game? Because you're not going to play a game with God. You can play games with everybody around you, but not with God. That's really what Paul's telling them here. If you receive the Spirit and were saved by faith, then your spiritual walk in security cannot be of works. <laughs> it's that simple. It's all by faith. The works will be there. But it's because of faith. It's because you are saved. Because the Holy Spirit is working in you. The very purpose of Paul's ministry is to preach salvation apart from works. Everything Paul is doing, Acts 26, 28, as he closed out the transition period from law to grace in the book of Acts, comes down to the end of the book and he says to open their... This is what Jesus commanding Paul. He said, Paul, this is your ministry. Right here. You, churches have uh, what they call purpose statements. This better, it better be something close to this if it's not this exactly. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Not a word there about telling them to be sanctified or saved by works. All the works come, yes, but the salvation is by faith. Nothing but faith. Don't be bewitched. All efforts to make salvation a matter of works is a satanic attempt to undermine the gospel and defeat the victory only found in the blood sacrifice of Jesus. Think of how many ways Satan has come up with to dupe people. You may be a sucker for religion and formalism, so he'll send you to the Catholic or the, the uh, Protestant churches that don't preach the gospel. And you'll feel, oh, look at all the, oh, it's so wonderful, incense. Oh, you know, all the chanting, or whatever it is. I mean, there's some people, they're emotional, you know, so they'll go to the churches that everybody's running up down the aisle, yeah, you know, and, hey, turn on the fan, let's swing, you know, and that kind of thing. And, yeah, Gatorade, you know, instead of communion juice. And everybody's just going crazy and having a great time and they never preach the gospel. They take up an offering, but they never preach the gospel. That Satan knows what will get you. And eventually he's going to present it to you. So you better be ready now. And when that comes along, you can just laugh at it. <laughs> get away. Come on. Who do you think you're fooling? So as you leave today, Consider all the ways that Satan tries to bewitch believers and successfully bewitches unbelievers. Think of that. Consider that. As Paul told Timothy, consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. And we could, we could sit here, we could close down right now and everybody get a second piece of cake and, and then we could sit around for hours and just go one after another and talk about how Satan bewitches. But the best thing, the only sure way to be able to avoid being bewitched is to get in the truth. Amen. You get a hold of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the biblical gospel, and you get to the point of obsession. Obsession isn't always bad, folks. Obsession with that gospel being your only hope for eternal life. When you wake up in the morning, there may be different prayer requests from day to day, different things on your mind and heart, but every day, wake up and thank Jesus for dying for your sins. Amen. And praising Him for that wonderful resurrection. 
He overcame your death penalty. You earned it. I earned it. The wages of sin is death. We put in our time. And if you don't turn to Jesus who took that payment for you, then there's a payday coming. You will pay. Because you're asking for it. You've got your hand out saying, give it to me, give it to me. I don't want the free gift of salvation. Give me the payment that I've deserved, which is death. But as saved brothers and sisters waking up every morning, and then we can... Song says, count your many blessings. And we can go through all the blessings and everything, but the first thing, the most important thing is the salvation Jesus has provided. And if you know the gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, nothing can come along and bewitch you. You will be safeguarded. But if, the, if you don't, then you're game. And Lucifer has a huge horde of hunters who are out there looking for you. And if you don't fall in love with Jesus and that gospel, you got a target on your back. Amen. And in the world of the Spirit, Satan can see that target. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank You, Lord, for this message and, and all that You've taught us in this little epistle that they credit really for being the impetus behind the end of the dark age as people came to the knowledge of the truth of the gospel and they put aside the false gospels and the superstitions and all that stuff the dark age died but now it seems like we're entering into another dark age as people put aside the word of God and come up with their own opinions about salvation and make a God created in their own image in their own likeness May we always look to the Scripture alone and subject our minds and our hearts to the truth of Scripture about who you are and the gospel message itself. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This is the 11th hour with news, commentary, answers to viewer questions from the authorized King James Bible. Here is Pastor Greg Miller. In response to a uh, previous video titled, uh, The Road to Sodom is Paid with Lies, we have a question put forth, and it's a good question, and it's one that we want to follow up on. One viewer accused us basically of sodomite bashing and he said sodomy is no worse than gambling or doing drugs or other sinful sex, right? That's a good question, but it's one that's answered incorrectly uh, by too many these days, even uh, professing Christians. Because of this misunderstanding then they use that question in order to silence those who are taking a strong stand against the sin of Sodom. So let's answer that question. Is sodomy no worse than gambling, using drugs, or having sex outside of marriage as uh, too many heterosexuals are doing today? Well, here's a full and honest answer. One, in a sense, yes. Sin is sin. And sodomy, which is same-sex sexual activity, uh, is a sin. And sin is sin. But two, sodomy is different for one simple reason, and that is the sodomites. Uh, sodomites are proud of their sin. Sodomites are rebellious. They shake their fist in, in defiance of God and in defiance of His condemnation of their sexual preference, as it's, as it's called. The sin of sodomy is uh, worse than other sins, both historically and in our own day, because of the wicked character of the sodomite. Now, God always speaks of sodomites in extreme terms. Uh, God never speaks of sodomy, uh, sodomites in the, in the sin of Sodom uh, the way modern evangelicals do for the most part. Uh, in Genesis 13, 13, um, sodomites are described when the, the Bible says, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Uh, in Genesis 18, 20, we read, 
And the Lord said, because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, and there's always been a boldness about Sodomites whenever they come out of the closet. And uh, how many thief pride parades have you ever seen? Or how many adulterers rights movements have you heard of? None. Uh, but the Sodomites label their sin with nice sounding words like gay or scientific sounding terms like homosexuality. And then they demand their rights and they have these big parades and rallies. They distinguish themselves from all other categories of sinners by that very word that they label their own lifestyle, as they call it, which is a death style, with the word pride. Isaiah 3, 9 says, The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. When God wants to really lay out a sinner, he compares them to Sodomites because they're proud of it. They're reprobate. They're perverted. Their minds are twisted, and they are proud of some, what, what God considers a complete, uh, completely wicked and perversion uh, of his plan for sexuality. Sodomites demand that you accept their sin. You have to accept it, and then you have to allow them to join your churches. Uh, and they want to join while living openly in their sin, flaunting their rebellion against God in your churches, in your family gatherings. No one else does that. We could go on and on showing you all these examples, but you don't even try to play that guilt game. Uh, uh, when we come out boldly against the sins of Sodom, it, it's it's not because we have a lopsided obsession with uh, this sin. Uh, at the time of this uh, recording, we have over uh, 600 some videos, and maybe only, uh, there's less than a dozen that deal with this issue. We're not obsessed with it, but boy, we get the most response, especially the heated responses, the, the hate and the, uh, the nastiness. Uh, is like nothing else when we uh, upload these videos on the sin of Sodom. They're, it's the Sodomites are the ones who are in your face. They come in my face. They're in our faces. And I got news, we'll be in yours. You come at me with your sin, I don't care what it is. You come at me in my face telling me I have to accommodate and accept your wickedness and you push it down my throat and push it in my face and try to force it into churches and uh, pretty much uh, alienate family members and loved ones who have to choose a side because you demand people choose a side. We'll be in your face. No apologies. But some Christians are being silenced by uh, the intimidation factor. Uh, people are afraid also of losing their jobs. Um, Christians are, a lot of Christians are just afraid to suffer for the Lord. Um, you might call them cowards. But how many people are afraid to speak out against uh, kleptomaniacs? How many people are afraid of losing their jobs when they speak out against thieves? Uh, how many business owners face this sort of intimidation from other types of sinners? This is my, this is my treasure. This is the Baronel Stutzman story. Went to Brinton and New Haven, Missouri, and Edison, Pennsylvania, Birmingham, Alabama. This one is from Sri Lanka, India, and it was a minister who was on a train who met an American who had an article about Arlene's flowers. I see calls every week and just says, how are you doing, sister? And then I got the Bible from a church in Yakima that came down, and they came to the shop and uh, they said they were behind us and that they were thinking of us and very, very special. The story of a 70-year-old florist being shut down because she would not service a gay wedding. I just wanted to 
do something out of the ordinary. She is the most kind, gentle soul you'll ever meet. If you go into her shop, you're going to get a hug. And so she's very warm. And she had established a really warm relationship with Rob Ingersoll, um, who had been in nine years and would come in and spend a good amount of money throughout the year. And they had gotten to know each other pretty well. He has a very creative mind. And so we just sort of hit it off. At one point, he decided to get married a few months after same-sex marriage became legal in Washington State. And he, of course, wanted her to do it. There was a real struggle to, to decide what to do with that. My husband and I talked it over, and, you know, as much as I love Rob, I just couldn't, couldn't be a part of that. If I did Rob's wedding, it would be from my heart, because I, I think he's a really special person, and I would want to make it really special for him. So it wasn't something that I flippantly said, oh, I'm not going to do Rob's wedding because he's gay. When I talked to Rob, I did not think this would be a, a major issue. I was very surprised at that. When Barra now respectfully told Rob of her decision, the news quickly spread through social media, and the Washington State Attorney General, seeing it there, sued her. The Attorney General's action in this case is unprecedented in Washington State. We have never had an Attorney General take the position that this Attorney General has taken. Now the ACLU's piled on, and the same-sex couple have sued her as well. And interestingly, um, they have sued her in her personal capacity as well as her business. So she is at great risk. As a result of serving someone lovingly and admittedly in a kind way for nine years and because you won't do one same-sex wedding, you're going to lose your house or your business. And she's been working in this business for 40 years. The story was distorted in the media and Barnell's shop was flooded with insults, threats, and offensive I've read comments. I've a lot of hate mail over the years, but what I've read in this case just is stunning. It's so, it makes you sick to your stomach when just volumes after volumes, thousands of pages. People are filled with hate and refuse to even listen to what the real story is and how angry and frustrated and it's just so sad. This is about marriage. It's not about bigotry. She knew of their relationship. They provided, she provided flowers that they sent to each other. But when it came to marriage, that was the line. Because as she'll tell you, marriage represents the relationship of Christ and his church. It's a sacred covenant. Marriage is a sacred, very sacred thing. You want flowers for your anniversary, your birthday, or whatever, that's fine. But I just cannot do a same-sex marriage. So this case in particular is coercing someone to engage in expression. And that's against America's tradition, and it's unconstitutional. It's also unnecessary. There are lots of florists. If you look in the Tri-Cities area, there's like three pages in the yellow pages of florists that could have served this couple. Um, they've even admitted that after they received enough offers for free wedding arrangements to do 20 different weddings. But yet, what's being set up here is that's not good enough. It's not good enough that there are other florists. We have to coerce everyone to do what we want them to do, even if it violates religious convictions. I have to have faith that he's going to protect me and uh, give me the courage and the knowledge and the wisdom to, to stand firm on this. But uh, also help me understand what obedience is and what going to cry, <clears throat> and what following Christ is. You, know, you, can't, you can't sit on the fence, like he says, you can't be lukewarm. And that's what I was, I was lukewarm. Baronel's legal struggle continues. And Alliance Defending Freedom is there with her fighting right beside her. How many people are intimidated into silence when speaking out against blasphemy or cheating on taxes? We're not talking about uh, naming names or even being con confrontational to an individual. Just saying you think sodomy is a sin. I mean, not even getting personal, but just saying you believe it's a sin. And Christians are fearful 
about speaking out against Sodom and this so-called gay marriage in general terms without even speaking out against a particular pair of Sodomites. But I got news, some of us aren't afraid. You can take a leap. I'm not afraid. If I have to live in a tent and eat saltine crackers, or if they put me in jail, I'm still going to look you in the eye and tell you that if you're in sodomite sin, you are wicked and you need to repent. If you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and have not been saved, I don't care what your sin is, you're going to hell. I'm going to tell you that. There aren't very many preachers with spying or uh, any kind of character today who will tell you the truth. They don't love you. They'd rather have your butt in the pew and have you putting money in the coffers and them to be able to spend your money. That's more important to them than to just tell you to repent. Sodom is wicked. There you have it. Isaiah 3.9 uh, said, The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul. For they have rewarded evil unto themselves. The prophet Isaiah wasn't afraid to tell you. But then you look at the next two verses in Isaiah 3. Verses 10 and 11 say, Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. We serve the living God. He came as a man and allowed himself to be crucified, shedding his blood, because he came to die for the sins of the whole world. They laid him in a grave, and then three days later, he set off an A-bomb in the spiritual world. He overcame death. He was raised bodily from the grave. And 40 days after that, he established air superiority by ascending from earth into heaven. But he promised before he left that he was going away to prepare a place for the saved. He's also got a place prepared for the damned, a temporary abode called hell. You die without Jesus Christ, you go there until the judgment, and then you're taken out of hell. Hell and death is cast into a lake of fire. And then when your name is not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, you too will be cast into a lake of fire. But Jesus said he went to prepare a place for the saved, and he promised to then come and to receive us unto himself. But when he returns, he's also going to settle all accounts. He's coming soon. And whatever the sodomites can do to us, if they can close down flower shops or uh, get churches kicked out of buildings or whatever they can do soon and very soon we're going to see the king just a little more than seven years after the rapture Sodom will be destroyed one final time and now's the time to choose sides Sodom is destined for destruction Jesus wins whose side are you on?